everyone. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> it took a little while. We're all set up. We found Tessie. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was kind of so caught up in a conversation. So thank you all for waiting. So yeah, yeah, but that's that's why where events are for to have good conversations that push you to the next yeah. level. Well, our next speaker is Tessie Hartjes. She's the team manager of Blue Jay Eindhoven. They also have a little stand in the drone area. So if you want to check out what they're doing, you can also visit there. Um, she uh, actually met Queen Maxima this week, I saw. Yeah, twice. Actually. Yeah, twice yeah. For, yeah, the cool, for, yeah. for an event. So yeah. that must be very interesting. Now, she will talk not about Queen Maxima, <laughs> but <laughs> about developing an indoor drone. So what is it? What sort of challenges do you face? And what can it actually do for you, an indoor drone? I'm really curious to hear all about that. Tessie, the stage is yours. Thank you. So yes, again, thank you all for waiting. Um, I've been team manager of Team Blue Jay Eindhoven. We're a team of 20 students from the Eindhoven University of Technology. Uh, actually, we started with 18 and we grew a little bit. Um, to give you an idea about our project, so we made an indoor drone. And I will tell you all about the technical challenges. But as you can see here, uh, the major part is actually the software side uh, and organization inside Oak also. But um, yeah, so it's less a hardware, but more a software project. So what w did we say? Well, actually, if you look at drones, you hear a lot of, of, the, of them, and you see a lot of YouTube films uh, about drones crashing, or you hear it on the news that drones are actually getting in the way of passenger airplanes. And what we said is, if you look at drones, they have some pretty nice features, actually. They can move in 3D space, space uh, and they can get into places where we can't. Uh, so we said, we want to show the world that drones can actually be useful for humans in their daily life. So we said, we want to make the first domestic drone. And in order for this drone to be actually useful or helpful for, this for the people, we said it should not only be helpful, but it should also be safe, social, and completely autonomous. Why does it need to be autonomous? Well, if you, look, if you fly outdoors, you can use GPS for your drone to be autonomous. But indoors, you don't have that. But you need to be able to fly way more stable because there's less room of error, of course. You are flying between the people and the drone needs to fly as stable as possible. And that's not possible if we control it. So the drone needs to control itself. So this might not be features you address to a drone normally, but we tried uh, actually to uh, achieve this. So how did we achieve this? So we use actually sensor fusion, like I told you. This is more of a software project actually than a hardware project. Um, so we use an optical flow sensor for the drone to measure its relative X and Y uh, displacement. Then we have a LiDAR, which is actually just a 1D laser uh, sensor to, do to measure its altitude. We use actually a visible light communication, which is a, a light communication of connected LED, LED lights that all have their own frequency. And this frequency uh, of these lamps can be considered uh, like their own code. And the drone has a camera facing upward, so it knows by seeing uh, which light or codes it receives, it knows exactly where it is uh, opposed to, um, to, uh, to the light. Do you understand what I'm saying? Thanks. So, and the last one is actually sonar. We use sonar for the active safety part. So uh, if anything comes within a range of 30 centimeters from the drone, it's, it will actually go away. As you can see on the picture, we also added another feature which we call passive safety. So we've added a ring around the drone, and actually what you don't see yet on the picture, but what we've added is a grid uh, above and beneath the drone, so you can never be hurt by its rotor. So why would you want a drone inside your home? Well, actually what we say is, and actually the, the movie doesn't work, so that's kind of unfortunate, um, but here we have this movie uh, where, we, where we they asked people in 1999, why do you have a mobile phone? And people answered, no, I don't have a mobile phone. I have my voicemail, I have my mailbox. I don't want to be like be reached all day when I'm cycling with my kid. I don't want to get to the phone. And I, we see it actually the same way with drones. You know, it's hard to see the possibilities uh, based on the current technology. So actually what we did in the first step, we made a demonstration which was actually a drone cafe. And it was not to show the future of food and beverage sector or to replace your waiter. It was actually to get the conversation with the crowd. So before people enter our cafe, we had this big experience hall where we said, well, 
if you have something that can actually move something for you and that can understand you and can be around you every day and even can help you when you're not around, like for example, watch your house, where would you use it for? So this is actually also a movie about this, but it still also doesn't work. But here you see this wall and we asked all these people to write or even draw out their ideas. And I think we collect around 400, 500 of these ideas where people would use it for. And what you see, for example, is like people that are in a wheelchair or people that need some extra care, they find this very attractive. So like I said, why would you want, why would you want to use a, a drone indoors? One thing we examined actually was fire safety. We had this small fire extinguishing rod, which can actually extinguish fire for 30 seconds. So if you have an infrared camera or a connected fire uh, alarm, then your drone can actually go out to this fire and extinguish it for you. Maybe you're unconscious, maybe you're sleeping, maybe you're not at home, or maybe you're just not able to walk that fast, and the drone can actually save your life. So one of the next use cases is actually a big one. So if you see the indoor uh, navigation market, it's all based on indoor guidance. Getting people from point A to B indoors, because as I said, you don't have the GPS system. And there are a lot of apps. I know, for example, uh, here the airport uses, uh, they I think they use 2,000 or 5,000 Bluetooth beacons, and they have like uh, five meter accuracy. So five meter, or drone can do it on five centimeters actually. And uh, it's not only, for example, in the at the airport, but also in case of emergency, or uh, think about elderly people that tend to wander around and tend to forget how they can come uh, back to their homes. The drone can be their guide. So another use case, which I already mentioned, is actually in the healthcare uh, direction. So people with disabilities or people maybe uh, that are paralyzed or need some extra care and help, our drone can actually be voice commanded. So it, you can just ask the drone, get my medicine. And the next step in the future may, might be um, if you have an elderly woman living alone in her home and she forgets her medicine and the drone gets this medicine, brings it to her, but there's no interaction, then that's a sign maybe something is wrong. So you can send, for example, the camera feed to your neighbors or to your daughter or to your son, or the drone could decide for itself to maybe alarm the, the first help. Well, another one uh, is um, intruders. So if you're not around in your home and there's an intruder, the drone can, for example, well, our, not our drone because it's still too noisy, but uh, in the future, the drone can come up to, can even just check out, hey, what is going on? Who is in my home or who is sneaking around? And it can also send the camera feed and then let you decide what you want it to do. So like I already said, our drone is still a bit too noisy and it's too big. Um, but in the evolution, in the next years, because we started in September, we had like seven or eight months of development, um, and we added a lot of features which makes, which makes it a unique drone. But in the future, it will be smaller, lighter, quieter, and even intelligent, more intelligent. So what is our goal then? Well, actually, what we want is to create a platform. And we are, you already saw it on one slide in my presentation. We actually want to create a software platform where people are able to program their own app. So if you buy this drone and you have a modular uh, s um, system where you can just attach some sensors or get some sensors out, then you could say, for example, I want it for my grandma, I want the fire safety functionalities, or maybe you just wanted to get your a can of beer or something else. And um, yeah, then you can create this community and we can all help each other by finding out what are actually the, the next use cases for this drone. And of course, uh, I already mentioned it, uh, the nicest thing about this drone is it can actually move. So in the future, you will have all these uh, IoT devices which uh, will all be connected, but they will always stay in their place, opposed to this drone. It can just move around your house, check out things, and uh, yeah, replace things. So um, as I was already told, uh, 
we had a drone cafe where I in this drone cafe, uh, people would be seated at a table. And then the first drone would come up to this table and people could order at this drone. They could just point out to the menu, we'll get feedback about what they're ordering, and then the second drone actually would bring this drink. And actually we have a mini version or a small version of this cafe in hall three next to the FPV drone racing where you can be served by a drone actually. Yeah, and unfortunately the, 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 the movies don't work, so <laughs> that was my presentation. Thank you all for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah, this one is on. Do we have a question from the audience to Tessie? I was wondering, um, you said the, um, uh, the drone was, was sort of social, so you can talk to it and it actually understands you. So if you order a drink, you can say, give me a Diet Coke and it will really understand what you mean already, or is that future? Well, we actually had that system, but then the because our cafe was part of a big festival, and it was actually in the middle of this festival, so there were different stations surrounding our tent. And then, of course, a cafe also needs music and a lot of people. So uh, ordering by voice command wasn't the most practical uh, option. So we chose actually d by just uh, visual uh, order. So yeah, it's feasible, but we didn't imp implement it on our drones for the cafe, but we did implement the system actually. Ah, so and, it and it can actually pick things up. So, so it has, yeah. ah, so so it's it has fully a operational. gripper beneath it. Um, I might have skipped that part too easily. But if you see here, uh, this gripper is 3D printed material and it has a feedback mechanism. So actually w uh, it can pick up a small grape or a big bottle of water and it will bend itself around the object. And, so, and if you would, do you, have, do you ever take it home <laughs> with you? And what would you use it for? Well, I haven't taken it home yet. Well, I have taken the drone home, but not uh, working. Um, but I think actually the just the social safety, like uh, just knowing there is something in your home that if you, well, I tend to forget stuff. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, check out if it's there. And um, like I said, the fire safety, if you see there are 100,000 in a home fires every year uh, in the Netherlands only, and um, it's not always fatal. I think there are 60 fatal uh, incidents per year. But then if you look at the economic uh, disaster, which is actually following it, because uh, we also said if you have like a laboratory with a lot of expensive equipment and you have this sprinkler installation and there's this small fire, then the sprinkler installation goes off and all the equipment is ruined. But if you have a drone, it can just extinguish this small fire and maybe save the rest of your equipment. So, well, that's a nice idea to have in your home, I think. I agree. Perhaps a question now from the audience? Yes, we've got two. So first, oh you, okay. Over to Camille. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Um, did you already uh, test, did some test with the fire extinguishing with th this drone? We did and we already know what we need to change uh, because we, um, we had this fire extinguishing world where we need to put like a roof on it. Uh, and uh, then the environment where we tested it was actually at the fire safety department, but it was um, partly outdoors. So there was a lot of wind and um, so we did some tests, but we still need to go through uh, with the next step and improvement. And how big can the fires be it can handle? Well, uh, we thought because uh, we only did uh, two tests, I think, and it was at the fire safety, we made like a pan and put fire in that. And we saw some YouTube movies where they had like this car which was on fire, like the, the, the motor, and they could extinguish it. But what we noticed is like it can, it can, um, it's an aerosol and it can extinguish for 30 seconds. After 10 seconds, the, the, the pan with the fire was like already extinguished. So I think, I wouldn't know how big like in size, but I think it's more than enough to extinguish starting fire in your home, yeah. And gentlemen over here. Uh, several questions. One is uh, for domestic use. Uh, what sort of noise level uh, have you thought about in terms of, you know, your goals? Uh, if How you have quiet, your, yeah. your normal ventilator, yeah, that will be the uh, best achievable thing, I think. Okay. Because actually, uh, we had a, this Facebook questionnaire where we asked people if you have a domestic drone, what what may it do for you or what may it not do for you and what should it do on us. And actually people said it shouldn't be 
silent because that's scary. It could c creep up on you. So I think that's the best level uh, for ev everything. Okay. And um, if there were like pets, like cats and dogs, have you had chance to experiment with those? And can they, have you observed that the pets got used to it over time or it's, it's a no-go at the moment? No, actually, um, guys, did you had any pets around? I don't think so, no. We didn't test that yet, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's All a right. good one, though, yeah. Thank you. There will be hilarious new YouTube films on yeah. cats, <laughs> cats and drones and <laughs> what have you. Cat on a drone instead <laughs> of the Roomba. <laughs> yeah. any, any more questions from the audience? There was a question, I think, oh. in the back. Oh, from our uh, stage moderator <laughs> the organization. Um, let me walk over. That's... Sometimes it starts to sing, but this is okay. Yeah. Like, how do you guarantee the safety of the drones? Like, maybe if for beginners there are gonna be some crashes, or how to make sure they safe they're safe enough? Well, the actually, the thing about our drone is that it's passively as well as actively safe. So the passive part is that we did some crash tests, and I think the worst that it could do to you is uh, bruise you. But uh, our um, goal was, if it can hurt you in a way there's blood, then it's not safe enough. But if it bumps into you, and actually you can just push it away. Um, but the drone should be as small and light that even if it crashes, it doesn't break anything. And um, of course, it's a flying machine, so you can never be 100% sure. Uh, but you just need to make sure that if it crashes, uh, the damage is minimized. And I think that's the goal we are setting with for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey, any last question, maybe? Then I hope it's not. If I'm near that, it's going to. Oh, uh, it's going to sing. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tessie, thank you very much yeah, for your interesting talk. Uh, if you have questions popping up in your head she'll probably be around and there's in hall three an area where you can actually see it yeah we have perform. a small version of our yeah. cafe so. so go over there check it out and thank you very much